Since 1999, Hong Kong Legends had released remastered versions of classics, relatively old and new, that had gained them an international reputation. But that wasn't enough to keep them in business. Throughout this video, I'll be talking about the history, catalogue, rebranding and my own experiences of a DVD company that have always given us only the best in Hong Kong cinema. This is the legacy of Hong Kong Legends. For the majority of the last half century, Hong Kong action cinema has stimulated the imaginations and fueled the passions of moviegoers from all over the world. Matchless, invigorating and bursting with power and energy, its appeal is both undeniable and timeless. A dynamic genre demands a dynamic representation. In early February of 1999, a team at Medusa Communications decided to take up the challenge. Its goal to bring to the marketplace for the first time a fusion of quality production values and enlightened creative energy in the presentation of the classics of Hong Kong cinema. In that moment, an exciting new label was born. Back in 2002, many things were changing for me. I'd finally started secondary school, I was ready to become an older human being, but of course it was still filled with reading Marvel and DC comics where I was thrown into a school made of people who would beat the living shit out of you if you even uttered the words anime and comic book in the same sentence. I was watching programs like Dragon Ball Z, Tenchi Moyo, Outlaw Star on a channel called CNX, which was a very short-lived channel by the Turner Broadcast System, the same people behind Cartoon Network. CNX premiered on the 14th of October 2002 and would be defunct just under a year later on September 7th 2003, being replaced by Toonami. But what got me into watching Asian martial arts films and cinema is the films CNX played every night at 10 o'clock where they would show the awful dubs of films such as Police Story 2, Snake in the Eagle's Shadow, 2000 AD and many many more. So after having my appetite wetened by what they'd offered, I wanted to source the films out and this is where the Hong Kong Legends comes into the picture. The first Hong Kong Legends film I owned was Armour of God, to which I still have this day. The film which Jackie Chan almost died from. It grabbed me how the attention to detail was handled. The remastering of the picture and sound quality was great and a huge improvement to the films I saw on TV whose audio was so muffled you think the audio makes a fell asleep leaving the film to play out and then say he did it and got his paycheck. What also opened my eyes was the audio commentary by Hong Kong cinema expert Bay Logan who is a total badass by the way. His insight to the world of Asian cinema piqued my interest so my collection naturally grew. Hong Kong Legends was first put out on the market in 1999. There was initially part of Medusa Communications, who along with Soul Blade, bought up the UK distribution rights for film titles previously owned by Eastern Heroes label. From 1999 through to the discontinuation in 2007, the company had released 101 Hong Kong classic films, primarily martial arts films and other action films. In preparing the DVDs, they gained access to the vaults of Hong Kong studios such as Golden Harvest, selecting the films with the highest quality prints available. Hong Kong Legends added audio commentaries most notably by the Hong Kong cinema expert Bay Logan who I spoke about earlier, conducted interviews with key actors, directors and other film crew, performed new translations for subtitles and cleaned up damage to the films. The footage you are seeing now is taken from the DVD and Introduction to Hong Kong Legends which shows the process they went to restoring the films back to a quality that was exceptional. I will let Bay Logan talk for a moment about the time and effort that goes into making a Hong Kong Legends DVD. In the past, clumsy subtitles in Hong Kong films have caused the actors to come across as very comic characters. This may be appropriate to reflect in a Jackie Chan comedy for example. 
In 2004, Contender Entertainment Group, the UK branch of Entertainment One, took over Medusa Communications, including both Hong Kong Legends and their sister brand, Premier Asia. Brian White, who had been the brand manager and prime mover of the label, left Contender. He was also a close personal friend of Bay Logan, with Logan deciding it was time to leave the company and he moved to the US, working in a similar capacity for the Weinstein Company's East Asia DVD distribution company, Dragon Dynasty. With the loss of two of its biggest assets, Logan for his popular commentaries and White who had been responsible for many of the exclusive extras. Hong Kong Legends had to cancel many of its planned releases as no attempt was made to bring in replacement staff to perform audio commentaries or to create bonus features and the release schedule dropped, ultimately spelling the demise of the company. Subsequent DVDs were released in so-called ultra-bit versions, implying DVDs with improved bit rates or in otherwise special editions in fact. The releases were significantly more basic, the company had lost of the rights for its additional features other than trailers, and the bit rate was no higher than their previous releases. And the directors of Medusa went on to start a new company, Showbox Media Group. Beginning in September 2005, in coordination with magazine partwork publisher Diagnosti, a selection of the better known Hong Kong legend titles were released within a fortnight magazine giving facts and background on the featured film. The titles released include Fist of Fury, Drunken Master, Once Upon a Time in China, The Killer, and the series continued for 45 issues. Back in the day, that was actually something that I owned. I owned all 45 issues of Hong Kong Legends. But then, as I got older, I thought to myself, it's time to actually buy the legit versions of them. But some of them, you can't get in the UK. For example, you can't get Prison on Fire 1 and 2, and you can't get Heroic Trio and The Executioners. Peking Opera Blues as well. Some of these films, you can't get unless they were literally part of that set. On November 5th, 2007, Hong Kong Legends DVD label was discontinued after Cine Asia DVD label was formed. And on March 18th, 2011, Cine Asia announced the revival of the Hong Kong Legends titles under the banner of Cine Asia Presents Hong Kong Legends. The press release featured new artwork for The Big Boss, Fist of Fury, Game of Death and Way of the Dragon. Some of these titles I do actually own. With just over 100 titles in the Hong Kong Legends Library, from Fist of Fury all the way down to New Police Story, there are many great films to be found in this collection. Most may be martial arts, but there are many periodic films, like Once Upon a Time in China, Moon Warriors and Wing Chun. With so many well-known titles and others unknown, you will find one I'm sure you will love. Through the Hong Kong Legends magazine, I discovered other films I originally wouldn't have watched before like Outlaw Brothers, Tai Chi Boxer, Legend of a Fighter and The Odd Couple. The Sammo Hung film, not the 1960s comedy. As I said previously, when Bay and Brian left Contender to go work in America, many of the planned future releases were scrapped. The later films which were released were poor ultra bit releases that didn't make the film look any better than if you'd brought a Hong Kong Legends normal DVD. But yet they tried to sell it with ultra bit goodness. There's also no commentary from Logan on the disc, and the only features were pretty much trailers, and they were priced stupidly high and now considered collectible, such as Spiritual Kung Fu, Shaolin Wooden Men, Hapkido, Magnificent Bodyguards, and even A Better Tomorrow 2. Whereas in America, they were releasing films from the Shaw Brothers and their old school kung fu films like Executioners from Shaolin and The One on Swordsman. Many films they released would also be released by the company Cine Asia. A company who have been around since 2006 makes the transition from HKL to Cine Asia as smooth as possible. As it's been over 10 years, I can't recall which was the first release they did but I believe it was the 2005 film The Myth which had a special release with the special feature An Introduction to Cine Asia. A small featurette in the same vein as An Introduction to Hong Kong Legends with the Jet Li film Hitman. 
Hong Kong Legends was known more for its catalogue of older Hong Kong cinema, whereas Cine Asia was about releasing films that was more on the new and exciting side of the cinema, including The Myth, Killzone, Flashpoint, Dragon Tiger Gate, Robin B. Hood, and the listings could go on. They continued to release titles up to 2012, when in 2011, to celebrate the release of Jackie Chan's 100th film 1911 Revolution, they released numerous of Jackie Chan's older films, included with it was both Project A films and both Police Story films, amongst many others. Along with the Jackie Chan films, they released many other Hong Kong Legends films, like Story of Ricky, Last Hurrah for Chivalry, Heroes Shed No Tears, The Scorpion King, and The Master, just to name a few. Then out of nowhere, they just stopped releasing films. People were saying it's the end of Sunny Asia, and then in July 2016, fantastic birthday present by the way, they announced the release of Benny Chan's Call of Heroes, and a few days ago, they released their next release, which will be Dante Lam's Operation Mekong in April 2017. I expect nothing more than just a great spring of releases from these guys now and in the future. For this part of the video, I thought it would be fun to take a look at one of the DVDs from the Hong Kong Legends and one from the Cine Asia collection. On the left is Police Story, one of my favourite Hong Kong Legends films, and on the right is The Beast Stalker, a two disc collector's edition, and I've put collector's edition in speech marks, just because all of these DVDs and Blu-rays have the collector's edition written on them. Now I can understand why HMV sold them for £20 a pop. Anyway, starting with the cover artwork, the Hong Kong Legends cover looks very basic with the white background, vertical label at the side and Jackie Chan cutout. The later years of the company took away the vertical side label and produced more of a normal DVD cover, putting more of an effort into the design. But looking to the right, we have the Beastalker DVD cover artwork, which is more of a normal DVD cover, with Nicholas Zay looking as badass as he usually is in these type of films. The colour palette reflects the tone as well, with the green gradient, and with the cutouts of the characters looking a bit more animated in posture than the normal other Hong Kong Legends DVD. On the back we get a look at the features these two have, starting with Police Story, and there is just one disc, but contains quite a few bonus extras, including an awesome full length commentary from Bay Logan, which became much of a staple for every release. An exclusive interview with Jackie Chan who talks about the film and his stories of what happened on set, and the usual showing of how the film has been remastered and got its original Cantonese audio. The menus are boasted at being animated. A few trailers as well on the upcoming and already released films, and that's pretty much it. Now to take a gander at the Beast Stalker. We get the standard Dolby 5.1 English and Cantonese audio, a few interviews with Nicholas Zay, Zhang Jing Chu, Nick Chung, and director Dante Lam. A making of featurette, which is always fun to watch, with a further four more behind the scenes featurettes, a trailer gallery with some deleted scenes and alternate scenes. If you want your Asian DVD collection to have tons of extras, you would go with Cine Asia. But if you want to take a trip down memory lane with the old school martial arts and actions films, you'd go to Hong Kong Legends. Or, if you're like me, don't care and love to collect Asian films and have a vast library of Asian goodness, you'll buy Cine Asia, Hong Kong Legends, Tartan Asian Extreme, this company, that company, and every Tom, Dick and Harry who slap a brand on running out of time, one of my all-time top 10 favourite Hong Kong cinema films. All in all, Hong Kong Legends started something big for Westerners, mainly the UK, Australia and then eventually the USA. We were given the films, I'll bet in a very poor state of image and sound, but they went the extra mile with remastering the film from the ground up, giving us a newfound love for Asian stars who at that time had just started coming to America to make it big in Hollywood, so the timing was pretty much perfect. Seeing the label dissolve in 2007 was kind of a bittersweet symphony, 
They released fewer and fewer films where they could have just unleashed the rest of the films and pushed them to market looking tacky and downright insulting towards fans of the collection. But they didn't. They admitted defeat and sadly some of those films they were set to release were simply scrapped and this is only a hypothesis but I reckon they were released over on the Dragon Dynasty side in America. That's to the best of my knowledge anyway but some of the titles strike as if Hong Kong Legends would have released them if Bay Logan and Brian White did stay. If you want to find copies of the Dragon Dynasty films check out eBay and Amazon and I'm sure someone will be selling them somewhere in the world. It has been six years since I made this video. I found it on one of my old hard drives and didn't realise that at one point I made it. So this is finally here. It's finally here for everyone to watch. But saying that, there have been huge differences that happened in the time since the video was made. Cine Asia is still going, but not as frequent as a few other distribution labels. Since 2017, they have released a small number of newer films on Blu-ray and DVD, including The Swordsman, Vanguard, Shockwave, The Killer, which isn't the Chai Yun Fat film but a Korean action film, and my personal favourite release on 4K, Raging Fire. This film is just WOW! Sadly, this was Benny Chan's final film before his untimely passing. Benny had been a director on my radar for many years, with a great catalogue of films like New Police Story, Robin B. Hood, Heroic Duo, and Call of Heroes, which at the time of the original video was only just released. In the end, Cine Asia is still chugging along slowly, with a lot of films being released in cinemas in a short cycle of one or two evenings. Cine Asia didn't choose to re-re-re-release a lot of the older Hong Kong legends. Instead, the licenses of the films were sent out to other distribution labels such as Eureka Home Entertainment and 88 Films respectively. My first exposure to 88 Films releasing some of the Hong Kong Legends titles was when I came across a Blu-ray copy of Dragon Fist which was released in December 2018. A film I had not long got on DVD after it was imported from Australia, but to have it on Blu-ray was a dream come true. Then only to find out there were a further three titles released simultaneously including Battle Creek Brawl, Snake and Crane Arts of Shaolin, a film I never expected I would ever get to see and was so happy to have it on Blu-ray in the collection. Finally, a film I hadn't heard of by that time called To Kill with Intrigue, showing that 88 films were going out their way to not only release films we knew, but a few that had never seen a decent release in the UK. From there, 88 has been releasing so many different Hong Kong action films and a huge amount being a lot of Jackie Chan's previous library from the Hong Kong Legends range. Such as Miracles, Dragons Forever, which also did eventually get a 4K release by the distributor, The Young Master, Armor of God, among many many more, which also included a number of the films released towards the end of the Hong Kong Legends lifetime, which were considered rarer and more costly, like Shaolin Wooden Men, Spiritual Kung Fu, and Fearless Hyena. As the titles were being periodically released, future titles were being planned and released as time went on, and included a number of other Hong Kong Legends films, like Jet Li's Master, Hero Shed No Tears, The Postman Fights Back, a more recent release however, but still, as of making this video, 88 films have released 22 previous released by the Hong Kong Legends collection, which is almost a quarter of the catalogue. I know that there have been a number of releases 88 have made that don't necessarily coincide with the original catalogue of releases Hong Kong Legends had previously made, but were released in the US under the Dragon Dynasty range. It was called the 88 Films Asia Collection, but they released older Shaw Brothers films like One-Armed Swordsman, Killer Constable, Flying Guillotine Parts 1 and 2, 
just to name a few. And the difference between other releases 88 films made was that these particular releases were numbered. I like to think I have a lot, but there are over 30 of these films alone, which doesn't take into account the huge library that was made while the Shaw Brothers studio was active. I feel I should make a video on the history of the Shaw Brothers at some point. And these releases were made with the Hong Kong cinema collector in mind, just like me. It did take a lot of waiting, but I finally did get a copy of One Arm Swordsman, as that one is now considered out of print. Eureka had their Masters of Cinema range with the release of Drunken Master. With Drunken Master being the only one at the time being from the Hong Kong Legends Library, it was a sign of things to come, showcasing that this was only the beginning. As time has gone on, they would eventually dabble deep into many of the titles released originally by the Hong Kong Legends label. Their big box release of the Once Upon a Time in China trilogy was followed not too long after, with it not being part of the Masters of Cinema range but instead opting to have it as a general release. Then two big double pack Blu-ray sets of Police Story 1 and 2 as well as Project A 1 and 2. With each release Eureka made, if you was like me and able to buy the first printing of these or any future releases, you would get a sturdy slip cover and a booklet inside with some small essays about the release of the films. It was pretty much as value for money as it got. Then eventually they released the Police Story Trilogy on 4K and it was like Christmas had come early for me. This is a great set as a version of Police Story 3 Supercop was released that had original Cantonese audio and not the dreadful dub on DVD we had only got before then. They took amazing care when transferring these on 4K and look like they were released last year. Even some releases from them contained a three release box set such as Sammo Hung's three films which were all from the Hong Kong Legends set. As of today there have been 33 films released, around another 40% of the Hong Kong Legends catalogue filled. Also Eureka did release a few of the special first print films which included a huge poster to put on your wall, but I'm going to save mine and buy frames for them. One of the more recent releases back in September 2023, we got another rare film from the Hong Kong Legends collection, She Shoots Straight. Back when I made the original video in 2017, the DVD was up for sale of £75, but now the Blu-ray is out, it's gone way down to £15, but spend £5 more and you can have it on Blu-ray, and it just looks nicer, you know. The transfers from Eureka are so well done, they have gone above and beyond with the restorations and made them look just as good now as they did when they were first released all those years ago. As the collection with Eureka was so popular, a number of the rarer films from the series would be released such as Hapkido, Dreadnought, Knockabout, amongst many others. Now is a better time than ever to be a lover of classic Hong Kong cinema. Oh, and remember how I said Running Out of Time was my favourite film? Yeah, so Eureka released it on Blu-ray and I'm such a happy bunny. And it's also got number two in as well, which is just, oh, I'm so happy to finally have Running Out of Time on Blu-ray. So good. I'm so happy. Finally, there's just one more distribution label to speak about and then I'll wrap this up. And that is the Arrow Video Company. For a number of years they have been the pioneers for the cult cinema fan in mind, with releases that cover many genres, mostly low budget horror, world cinema and again cult cinema titles. In between all that, Arrow have been dabbling more and more into the Hong Kong and Japanese cinema side. I'll make a video on the Japanese cinema films at some point, but when it comes to the Hong Kong cinema side of things, they released two behemoth collector sets with a number of Shaw Brothers titles with a few that were again released under the Dragon Dynasty collection. Like Executioners from Shaolin, 36th Chamber of Shaolin, just to name a few. But July 2023 for the 50th anniversary of Bruce Lee's passing, Arrow brought Bruce into the world of 4K with the Bruce Lee at Golden Harvest collection. With all the films released under the Hong Kong Legends label, including Bruce Lee, The Man, The Legend and The Legend documentaries. 
They were released under the Hong Kong Legends label, but now that's finally been upgraded to Blu-ray as well, so that's great. I can't be sure if Arrow will be releasing any of the films distributed under the Hong Kong Legends label, but we will have to wait and see. Before it was released under the Arrow label, all these Bruce Lee films, there were previous Blu-ray releases by Medium Rare called the Master Collection. Now they all featured the five of his completed films and they included the DVD of The Man, The Legend and The Legend. So to have The Man, The Legend, The Legend documentaries on Blu-ray from Arrow is a real treat for the eyes to finally see. Those films are really good and pretty much the only documentary on Bruce Lee that you need to watch. And that about covers all the official released Hong Kong Legends films up to November 2023. There are still many more titles from the catalogue that haven't been brought over to Blu-ray as of yet, and I still hold on to a lot of those films on DVD so I won't lose them anytime soon. Maybe one day the entire Hong Kong Legends library will be available on an updated source, but until then, I will continue to watch these films until I'm a very, very old man. I want to thank Bay Logan personally, not for just bringing these films over to the Western world, but also using his expertise in Hong Kong and Asian cinema and helped me build my love of the genre and the films that I wouldn't have originally given the time of day. There's so many great films out there in the world and I thank Bay for opening my mind and taking the plunge into the world of Hong Kong action cinema. And of course, thank you all who have made it this far and given your time to watch to the end. I'll be back again soon with another video, because I always come back. Peace.